It's the Cafe Grit Podcast, part one of a three-part series on how I lost 70 pounds and found my mojo again. Ooh, gonna be exciting. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to Cafe Grit, the place to go when you've got a hankering for purpose, a taste for fulfillment, and you're tired of living the rat race. I'm your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Thanks for stopping by. Cafe Grit is now open for service. Hey everybody, welcome to Cafe Grit. I'm your host, Beth Ann Campbell. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is season three, episode two, where I am going to kick off a three-part series where I'm gonna talk about my health journey of the past year and how I have to date lost 70 pounds and found my mojo. And and here's a spoiler, it's really not about the weight. Um, and I, I know this is going to resonate with some folks, so um, I hope you'll you'll find something in this and make the decision in 2022 to prioritize yourself. So before I kick that off, though, if you're watching me on video, and if you're not, I'll just tell you, I have a background of a lovely beach scene with an ocean in the back, and it, it is a warm, lovely tropical scene that I am using to protest winter because I, in the past year, I have developed a really ugly hatred of winter. I used to be the person who loved fall and cold weather, probably because I could put more clothing on, um, or maybe because I had so much insulation before um, my weight loss. For whatever reason, I hated summer. Now I've done a complete 180. I want hot, warm. I want to get up in the morning and have it be a little bit humid and maybe just a little too warm. I, I want that. And this cold, cold weather that we've been experiencing in the um really a lot of the eastern united states is i'm not happy about it i'm not happy about it and it came to an ugly head yesterday it's been so cold um and we've had snow and then snow on top of snow and then sleet and ice so it's very uncharacteristic for this part of the world and it has wreaked havoc on my uh, exercise routine Uh, and the primary piece of that being walking. So I've been walking every day, almost every day for the last over nine months. And I've grown to love it. I crave it. And so when this cold front hit, which has really been going on for the better part of a month now, it's really wreaked havoc because the roads have been unsafe. Um, It's been so cold. And then we've gotten so much snow that the gym shuts down. So finally, after this intermittent having to adjust and you know um, figure out other alternatives to my walking i finally was able to get up yesterday morning at my normal time which is in the wee hours still dark out and go for my morning walk and i was so excited because it was darn near balmy um it was about almost 40 degrees fahrenheit which i think which is a, a little bit above freezing if you're um, if you're using Celsius, so somewhere probably in the five or six degrees. Not hot, but f- f- considering that it's been well below freezing um, for qu- for a while, at least in the mornings, I was so excited. So I got up early, got my my leggings on. Um, did my little mobility and warm up, and got out there, and I was so excited. I was even feeling inspired. I did a little bit of jogging. And I, um, I got about, I don't know, a third of the way down my, uh, my normal route and I crossed the street and I was cutting through a bank parking lot because the sidewalks around the bank. And then there was a, there's a insurance place too. They didn't, they didn't shovel their sidewalks. Fuck you people who don't shovel your sidewalks. You know what? If you can't, if you're like an old person, I get it, but these are not old people. These are businesses and they should shovel their fucking sidewalks. So to avoid the um, six inches of snow still on the ground, covering the sidewalks uh, with sleet and frozen rain on top of it that had come in a a week week or so ago, I cut through the bank parking lot. And it was dry, it was safe, but there was a patch of wetness in my path. And like an idiot, I thought, oh, it's warm enough. It's just wetness, it's just wet. Um, and as it turns out, it was not just wet. There is this thing called black ice and this, this, I don't even know if this was even black ice to me, black ice is where it, it just looks wet. And then 
even when you look up close, it still just looks like wet pavement, but really it's slippery. This, once I got close up, and believe me, I got close and personal with this um, this patch, I realized that it was not not even black ice. It was really just a slick where the snow had melted. It was on an angle, on a um, it, was, it was on a hill, and the, the water was running down the, the parking lot, and it had frozen over. My right foot hit that patch thinking it was just water. I'm at a good pace. I'm going the leg the right the right foot just slides and i go down like a fucking anvil like i'm on top of the road runner um off a cliff right and i fall right on my right hip which just happens to have been kind of bothering me a little bit in the last few weeks just a little so i go down right on top of my phone i got my phone in my leggings pocket because i don't buy leggings unless they have pockets Ladies, are you with me, right? Why Why do people even make leggings without pockets? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. So I fell kind of on my phone. And if you, people that you know, when you fall, there's this rush of adrenaline. And that's what I had. And it was like, shit, you know, and you do this immediate assessment, like, oh my God, am I okay? And yes, I felt, I felt pain on the side of my leg, kind of on my hip, my um, high hip in my a little bit of my shin because i basically went down like on my leg my whole body just kind of went um nothing stopping me so and i could feel a little bit because my hands kind of just instinctively went out so i could feel a little bit my fingers like i'd hit them or something um and my so i i crawled to the the spot where it wasn't icy because i knew if i put my foot down on that stuff to get up i got up and you did a quick assessment and i was i was fine i was i definitely have a a bruise on my hip and a little bruise on my shin not anywhere near as bad as when i tripped at a big conference in 2015 and dumped an entire venti caramel macchiato macchiato on my head whole other story that was that was worse um, but I could tell that I, it was just, you know, soft tissue bruising stuff. So brilliant me though, I have to say, I fell right on my phone that was in my right pocket. So I took my phone out of my pocket of my leggings, put it in my jacket and then stuffed snow into my leggings pocket because I knew that would help if there was any bruising or swelling. And I'm telling you, I thought that was just a brilliant idea. You know, if somebody could make some money by just, I don't know making a little waterproof thing maybe because it did soak in a little bit but anyway i just i finished my walk point of my story being i fucking hate winter i fucking hate it this is why i have an ocean behind me and i know part of that is that i've dropped 70 pounds in the last just over well about nine and a half months so that's what i'm really going to start talking about in this series i want to talk about on the surface yes it's weight loss But my reasons for doing it were not weight loss. My reasons for doing it, I'll I'll get into. And the benefits of being on this journey where I have made the ultimate and lifelong decision to prioritize prioritize myself above all else, Um, the benefits that come out of being taking care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit are just infinite and go so far beyond Um, a number on a scale and a, and a, and a dress size. So that being said, let's start off. So today I'm going to talk about, um, what brought me to the point where I decided prioritize myself and what I did about it. So set setting this stage for, um, where I was a year ago, I was morbidly obese. Um, and uh, dealing with a family history of diabetes. Uh, my mother had diabetes. She died young. My brother had diabetes. He died young. Now they didn't die directly of diabetes, but I guarantee you those were factors. Um, so a year ago, I'm in my glory years, right? I'm, I'm a middle-aged woman and I had one of those people that constantly thinks about uh, you know, constantly was thinking about how I could lose weight, be healthy. Why? Because of all of the things that people deal with when they're overweight. And um, I, if, if you have not ever been overweight or if you've not been chronically overweight, um, you may not understand what goes through our heads when we are that obese. 
um, there's of course tons of guilt and tons of shame. Like I'm a successful woman. I went to college. I was, I think I'm pretty smart. Um, I had a great career and, you know, I'm, I'm successful in so many different ways. I mean, I published a book. Um, I was a successful dog mom. I mean, I could list goes on and on of the things that I could tell myself of how I was a successful person, but I was not able to do this. So there's a ton of guilt and shame about why can't I get it together? I, I have a family history of diabetes, of type two diabetes, and I know it's gonna. All, it, and it was starting to. Affect, it was. I, I was on my way. In fact, I was probably there. Um, and yet, in spite of that, I just felt um, over and over uh, kind of powerless to do anything. In spite of efforts, in spite of trying, in spite of every fucking day, every fucking day, waking up, going, today's going to be the day. Today's it's going to start today, and then failure after failure after failure. Um, when you're that heavy, you do things like avoid going to doctors. Why? Um, shame, guilt, um, lectures. S some doctors are, are great and some are assholes. I'm sorry, they are. Um, and, and a lot of them are just kind of in between. I mean, I, um, I've had doctors. Um, I had a, I had a doctor for many years. He ended up retiring and he was a nice guy. He really was a nice guy, but I would go in there and uh, it, he, he would give me the standard for my checkup, my yearly or bi-yearly checkup, he would give me the standard tests. You get your cholesterol, you get your thyroid, because if you're a chunky monkey, you get your thyroid. Um, you they take your blood pressure, right? And then they take your blood, your fasting blood glucose. And my blood gl glucose was starting to creep up there. So, you know, 100 is considered kind of the, the watermark of, um, it's actually a little bit lower than that, but just let's just say 100 um, blood sugar level. And I was up there in the, you know, the one, 110 range um, and creeping up every year just a little bit higher. And um, there was never any concrete help. There was never any discussion about what this really meant. It was just eat more vegetables. You know, you really need to lose weight. Okay, that's great. Fucking thank you, Einstein. Ca thank you, Captain Obvious. Yes, I know I need to lose weight. The problem is, is that I'm, I'm struggling doing that. Um, so that's what I, what a lot of us deal with, with doctors. We don't want to go. We don't, we don't certainly don't, um, get our feminine, uh, uh, exams, which are so critical. Um, and for me, so, as someone who had a mother who died of uterine cancer and who has a sister who had, um, pre uh, ovarian cancer, um, markers, it's even more critical. But when you're obese and you're fat, you don't, why? Because you, you are afraid of being, um, shamed and judged. If even if someone doesn't say anything, you feel the judgment. Um, you don't. You don't do things. You don't. Um, you don't go places. You don't do things. You you fear um, things that might be a little bit too physically difficult. I mean, I I couldn't walk up the stairs without um, getting uh, out of breath. So. You know, there's there's a whole mindset, and and you're in this vicious cycle of every day waking up today's going to be the day the diet's going to start today and then completely derailing and you know eating binging not exercising whatever and then thinking okay tomorrow tomorrow i'll do it tomorrow and, and just over and over and over again and it just it, it takes a lot of energy to um to mask that kind of shame and guilt and disappointment in yourself um but you know, to the outside world, I was a I was a outgoing, doing videos, branding, successful. That's fine. Um, inside, I was I was definitely struggling. Uh, again, I'm successful. Why can't I do this? What what's wrong with me? So, this all kind of came to a head last February, when. I, um, I got a call from my sister and who said that, you know, my, actually this over the course of several weeks, we had some, some texts and, and calls with the family, the siblings um, about my stepdad, her, her father. So my mother had four kids and in back in the seventies, she remarried, um, brought one son to that marriage. Um, so that's my stepbrother. And then they had two children together and they were together for 31 years. So this is somebody who um, my stepdad was my stepdad for 31 years. 
So, um, you know, he was, he was having some health problems and, uh, just a series of issues. And he had taken a fall and it was on some medication and was, um, having some, some constipation or they thought constipation issues. And like many people, um, who are not overweight, he was very, very skinny, but he's also uh, a man and a lot of men, a lot of people just, uh, don't go to doctors, but he didn't like doctors. He didn't like doctors, didn't like hospitals. So he avoided, avoided, avoided. Anyway, series of events. What ended up happening was he ended up, um, being admitted to um, emergency to have emergency sur surgery because he had a perforated bowel. And my sister, this is in Michigan, I'm in Virginia, my sister was taking care of him. So this was um, heyday of COVID, you know, limited people in the hospital. And my sister was um, kind of taking care of him in his post op condition in ICU. Um, and eventually my my brother, so um, her full brother, my my other brother, um, his dad, that's his his um, biological father, um, also came in to help as well. So they're taking care of my stepdad, who is basically recovering in ICU and, um, you know, looking okay, but you know, he just went through this whole several weeks of of this ordeal. And I had talked to my sister and I said, you know, if you need me to, to come, I am, I will be on the road tomorrow. And she was like, Nope, I got it. You know, she's thank you. But she was, she was taking care of it. Literally like the day after he had his surgery, we um, get contacted by my niece who is in her mid twenties. And she said, um, mom's in the hospital. That's my sister. And, um, they think she had a stroke. So my stepdad, 31 years, is being taken care of by my sister and brother in the hospital, having just gone through emergency surgery for bowel um, perforation, which, by the way, if you don't know, when you have any kind of surgery on your intestinal area, they like you to be totally cleaned out because that shit is poison. So this was, emer this was an emergency. Anyway, I get the, the contact from my, our niece saying that our sister uh, thought she was having a stroke. She's in the hospital. This is my younger sister. So um, now I've got two close relatives that are going through an emergency. Um, my sister ended up um, finding out that um, within a, a day or so that she had a substantial tumor in her brain and that it needed to be um, out like yesterday. So they scheduled emergency surgery for her. So um, I talked to my sister and, and she said, my other sister, and she said, you know, when you said that if I needed you, I need you. And um, she didn't even have to say it. I was, um, I was packing. So I, the next day I drove to Michigan and um, my sister had just gone through surgery. Um, so the good news is she came through it like fucking amazing i mean she had a scar that was you would not believe on her head um but it was the, about the best case scenario as you can possibly want when you have a brain tumor it was um you know not not cancerous and the surgery went really really well she was eating fucking reese's peanut butter cups the night after her surgery so um thank whatever powers are out there in the universe that that she came through okay Unfortunately, my stepdad did not fare so well and he deteriorated. I mean, this perforation had really just spilled bowel, just, you know, just poison into his body. And um, I think he was, uh, you know, not old. I mean, he was in his, his late 70s, um, mid to late 70s, but prematurely. You know, he, he was a otherwise, you know, otherwise alive and kicking uh, until this all happened. So, but he ended up passing away. So, so I'm in Michigan now dealing with a stepdad who passed away in, in a bit of an ugly situation with um, some of his uh, marital uh, family. And, you know, my sister who thankfully was on the mend, but still, you know, there was a lot of, still a lot of, uh, of that stress that was in there about, thinking I was going to lose her. 
So I'm sitting in my sister's living room, the, my sister, Allison, who is um, not the brain sister, that's Sue. Um, so Allison, um, who was taking care of um, my stepdad, her dad, um, had us all over to her house. And I hadn't seen my nieces and nephews and um, in about a year, so I was very excited. And I was sitting there in the living room eating something because that's what we do as a family, right? We eat. And I thinking about how the, the fact that we lost my mom at 63 years old and we lost our brother at 49, our, our older brother, the oldest um, brother in the family. And now we've lost my stepdad and in his mid seventies and almost thinking that we were going to lose my sister, um, you know, in her, um, not, not prematurely. I don't want to tell you how old she is. She's, uh, she's younger than me though. Um, and I was sitting there, you know, eating and I thought, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be a person that my nieces and nephews are crying over prematurely because I, it was heartbreaking to see them crying at my mom's funeral. It was heartbreaking to see them crying at my brother's funeral. Um, and I, you know, it was going to be heartbreaking, you know, having to deal with my stepdad, their grandpa. And I didn't, I didn't want to be that person. And I knew that I was going to be that person because I was carrying a lot of extra weight. And even though I had not been officially diagnosed with type two diabetes, I can tell you I was there. I had seen a, a doctor, my um, last practitioner in Michigan um, a few years before, as I said, when you're overweight, you just, you put off going to the doctor. So it had been a few years, but I went to a doctor in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and um, she diagnosed me with, I guess, metabolic syndrome is what it's called, pre-diabetes, and the blood sugar was going up. And it, and it, and so she had at that point recommended that I go on metformin, which is a very common drug for type two diabetes. Um, and so flash forward now it is three, three years later, and I knew um, that my blood sugar was even higher. So I, for all intents and purposes, I was a type two diabetic um, and overweight and now worrying about COVID, right? That was another huge thing is that, you know, when you have a pre-existing condition, um, obesity is a big factor in um, a lot of people um, getting COVID and not surviving COVID. And, you know, if nothing else, it was a little bit of fear and a little bit of, okay, I, I've got to, I've got, I don't want to be this person. I cannot be responsible for the sadness of the people that I love. And there are so many of them. I have a huge family. We're all very close. And I didn't, I don't want to be, that. didn't want to be that person. So that is the point that I decided I was struggling I was not able to, to make this happen to myself. And I decided that I was going to reach out and get some help. So I had been stalking, lurking, um, Jillian Davies, who is a, a health and fitness coach on her Facebook page and on LinkedIn for probably close to a year. Right. And I had thought about reaching out to her, but you know, again, you, you get racked with that guilt of why can't I do it? Why should I have to um, reach out to somebody? It, it, am I not, do, am I not strong enough to do this myself? But after that trip, <clears throat> when I got home, I sent her an instant message on Facebook and I, you know, I said, look, let's, let's have a call. And um, she was like, yep, let's do it. Let's see if, you know, what we can do and, and if we're a good fit. And I will, I will admit I was, I was scared and I was skeptical. I was like, I, I know, I know what I need to be doing. I just need to do it. But I needed to have somebody to be accountable to, to help me through, because in my mind, it was so overwhelming to think how much weight I needed to lose and all the things I needed to do to do it. And where do I even start? Cause I'd done it all. I used to have a personal trainer who was a bodybuilder. I used to, I've been to every gym. I've done the home gym shit. I've been, I've been a runner. 
uh, all of it. Where do I even start, especially now? So I, uh, I reached out. We had a call, and it was a good fit. And I've been working with Jillian since uh, a few weeks after that, so since early April of 2021. So it's been almost 10 months. It's been about nine and a half months. And again, the summary of it is 70 pounds lost. I've, you know, wonderful energy, my um, mental uh, health and stability, because I decided to prioritize me, suck it up and get help. And I wish I had done it earlier. Um, I didn't, but that is my message. That is my my part one message to you. Actually, my part one message to, do, to you is this. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, if you were like are like me, where you um, were very overweight or are very overweight, and you're going through the same things, the shame, um, afraid to do things, um, the guilt about why can't you do it yourself, whatever it is, I don't give a fuck what you do, what what steps you take, what is your methodology for um, making yourself healthier, and whether that means losing weight or just getting healthier. Because I, you know, if you're, um, you know, I'm still a chunky monkey, and and I'm, um, you know, perfectly okay with that. This is not about um, becoming a supermodel, but whatever it is that you need to do for yourself. Make the decision today to prioritize yourself above all else. And that means that you will do whatever it takes. That you are more important than your kids, your parents, your siblings, your, your spouse, um, your coworkers, your, your pets. You are the most important thing. And make getting yourself healthy, whatever that means to you, a priority. And if that means if, if what works for you is to reach out and get help from somebody, then do it. You will not regret it. Invest in yourself. That is what I did. Um, and that's what worked for me. That doesn't work for everybody. And some people are able to do it on their own. Some people opt for surgery. Some people opt for um, exercise and nutrition. Some people opt for, um, you know, w- uh, doing it on their own, joining a gym, um, uh, yoga, whatever it is, whatever it is, um, meditation, whatever it is, make the decision today to prioritize yourself. So I'm going to stop there. Next time I'm going to talk about the actual journey and some of the things that um, Jillian and I have been, you know, working on um, kind of at at a high level and and really just more about my transformation and how she has helped me uh, come to a better place, mind, body, and spirit and, and where I'm at right now. So I'm excited to talk to you about that. Um, This is going to be the, the season of the Jillians because I'm going to wrap up that series with pulling Jillian Davies into the grit seat. And I'm so excited for you to talk to her and just hear some things because I'm just, I am but one person. So I'm but one person that and we've been working together for nine and a half months, but she has other people and she has other experience that I know she can kind of um, bring to the table and, and, um, and talk, talk a little bit about what she sees as some of the things that, that other people struggle with too. So I'm very excited. I'm going to pull her in. It is the season of Jillian's, though. I am also pulling Jillian Hill, um, copywriter, editor extraordinaire, into the grit seat. Uh, And she may come earlier because um, we're going to be recording uh, her in the grit seat podcast in a a couple weeks. So I'm very excited about the Jillian's coming on the show. Um, So, yes, yeah. So so we'll talk more about that Um, once again to you. Thank you for listening. I hope that you get something out of this. I hope that you, um, something resonates that, that what I experience and go through, you know, um, clicks, something clicks in you and you make the decision to prioritize yourself. I so appreciate your being here and listening. Um, yeah, I, you're, you're a fucking rock star. That's all I'm going to say is you are a fucking rock star. Um, and rock stars make the decision to prioritize themselves. So I hope that you do that too. Um, I'll talk to you next time. I'm I'm kind of excited about this year and uh 
and I hope that you are too. And I'll be I'll be looking forward to hearing your stories, whatever they are. Um, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Beth Ann Campbell, um, and with an E. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at at the bean sixty seven. That's T H E B E A N N six seven. Twitter is the bean T H E B E A N N. The bean with two N's is an anagram of Beth Ann, if you must know. Um, and then I'll leave you with this one little tidbit too, because um, I'm going to be making a little life announcement uh, probably on the next podcast that I'm very excited about. I shall say no more other than it is a very positive thing and I will be very excited to um, bring this news to you. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Please rate, review, and subscribe um, if you can. And don't forget, as I said earlier, you are a fucking rock star. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Take it easy. Take it easy.